Hello, my marvellous sausages. Now, this is my guide for all us stoic average players to get the deterministic chaos exotic heavy machine gun. And it's definitely worth going for, especially if you like running void builds. But not only that, it's also a great weapon in its own right. Firstly, every fourth bullet is a heavy metal bullet and it'll weaken target, so it's a weakened round. So that's nice to fold into some kind of void builds that you may be using. But then its second perk turns every fourth bullet of those heavy metal bullets, so let's say every 16th bullet, maths, into a volatile round and then it's explosions ahoy. It also has ricochet rounds, which are very important to parts of this quest too. It looks superbly sci-fi. In fact, it's right up my alley, which of course made my eyes water. But not only are its looks on point, its sound effects are like walking around with a Buck Rogers in the 25th century soundboard under your arm. I highly recommend it to everyone. Now the mission itself doesn't take too long to complete. It took me about two hours to do it, but I was stopping and starting writing and taking notes for this guide you see so you guys will probably fly through it twice as fast maybe an hour and a quarter something like that power level wise i was at a level of 1743 so at that level some parts can be quite a challenge the highest power i encountered doing it was 1780 but don't worry it's very doable and in those parts when you died you didn't get completely wiped and start to restart again so it wasn't so bad at all to complete plus i got killed so many times during that it's absolutely ridiculous so let's get going i won't show you any cutscenes or anything like that there won't be any spoilers we'll just get straight down to how the quest unfolds so the first thing you need to do of course is finish the campaign and collect the unfinished business quest from Nimbus. You then have to go to the Hall of Heroes. There will be a cutscene and then you have to go back and talk to Nimbus to collect the actual first step where we need to do something. Now this first step is collecting cipher cubits from the Vex. Yes. Now what you want to do for this is you want to find the Vex incursion zone. Now that this zone is changes every week like it did on Europa with the different stasis zones. So what you want to do is find the Vex incursion zone. This week it's at Liming Harbour or Liming Harbour. I still don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, and you want to go down there and kill as many Vex as you can. And they will drop one of these things called Cubits. And they're pretty regular as well. Now these Cubits, once you collect eight of them, then you need to go and extract one piece of data from the planetary material called the cloud accretions. So for this, I'd make sure you've got your ghost resource finder on to find it. I kept my high blinding light uh, XP thing on my ghost, but I also put the within 50 meter range resource finder on my ghost as well. This makes it a lot easier to find these things. So eight of these qubits will do one of these resources from the cloud accretions. You need to find five of these cloud accretions, so that's 40 of the qubits, which is very nice. And there we go, I'm just collecting the last one there. And then the next step now is need to find the final data packet, which is located in Maya's Retreat, which is over here on the right-hand side of the map. Now, it's pretty easy to get to. You just have to follow the marker until you get to this cave area. So just follow the marker. It's very, very simple to do. You want to make sure you bend around to the left-hand side, though. Don't jump up onto the metal bit you can see when you'll be fighting the scrapping the Vex there. You go into a big cave, and then you can see the marker is right up at the top there. I used Strand to get up there. It was a lot easier to do that just by doing a grapple and getting on up. Follow the marker all the way around until you come to this plateau area area and be prepared for a bit of a fight. Now to get the fight going just go up to the big glowy conflux and press your button and that'll instigate waves of vex. You do get shot in the face quite a lot by cyclopses. It's not a darkness zone though so you're just gonna fight your way through until the very end. It's about a 1760 fight so I was still underpowered but I didn't find it too bad. Then once it's completed, you need to jump back up to the center and then you get the final data packet drop down. And then you've got to go and have a meet up with Osiris and Nimbus. The meeting takes place down here in the radio sond, which is at the bottom of the map. So what I would advise you to do is go back to the fast travel point at Liming Harbor and then make your way there. 
But of course, as you know, Destiny 2 waypoints can sometimes be a little bit misleading. So what you want to do is find your way to the radio sond. Uh, you'll know when you're there because you go uh, left through this little corridor and it says radio sond, of course, and then you've got this open area here. You want to jump over to that open hangar bay. Make sure you land on this little tabletop here and then jump across to the hangar bay there. And then what happens then is you've basically got one long corridor with quite a few vex in it. Now, once you shoot this door and smash it up, I love the smashy, smashy stuff in this, by the way. You've basically got to clear all the vex in each room to open up the doors that go on a bit further. And you can see the waypoint there in the distance is high up, so we know we need to get to a upper floor, okay? So you want to fight your way along this ground floor until you pass the room with that big pillar on it. And then you can see there, look, you've killed all the Vex. You should have opened that door in front of you. Now, for some reason, I didn't just run through the door. I went through this little walkway. So if the door is closed, you can come this little sneaky way as well to get up there. I don't know why I did this. Look, the door's very clearly open there, but I just did it. Your main point is to get into this room and clear these vex out. Once you clear these vex out and kill the little gits, then a door to the right will open up. Then this door will lead you to the staircase, which is going to take you up to the meeting. So again, you're going to have to fight your way through some vex here, but what you've also got to watch out for is there's a bit of a hydra as well. It's not a bit of a hydra, it's all of a hydra. Just make sure you kill the hydra. Once you do, you'll see the door slide majestically open behind it, and then you can go up and partake in the meeting and get us on to our next oh, step. Convey. Now, our next step entails picking up something called a compass, and we need to go to the Thrillodrome Lost Sector, located here in Liming Harbour. So what you need to do is come to Liming Harbour, get on your sparrow. It can be a little bit tricky to find first of all, but once you know where it is, it's no problem at all. You want to come along this road here and then you want to look up to your left here and there's a building which has got the Lost Sector marker on it. Hang on a minute, I'm stuck like a plum. Let's keep on going this way and up here and there it is there, look. So now then, we want to get into the Lost Sector is in, located in this building. So you want to come into this room here first of all, where you can see all the plants and stuff and you can see there's a hole in the ceiling there and once you jump up onto this bit here you can jump up up into here and then there's a venture that we need to shoot out to access the legend lost sector or it's just a lost sector rather so you can just sneak your way around here so i'm going to cut back now to my mission footage to carry on now, not only is this a great part of the mission, it also shows you exactly where this Lost Sector is, because we're going to be coming back here quite often, aren't we, as the years pile on. Well, anyway, all I need to do in this Lost Sector is kill all these Vex that you see playing video games, which is rather hilarious. Come through this area until you see three Vex who have been betrected, betrected, protected by like a dome shield. Once that shield drops down and all those Vex are killed, then a portal will open and you're going to go through to the boss fight. And the first thing you're going to see in the boss fight room is that large cyclops and it's shielded by two of those rays of light there. Basically, you need to go to the either side of those pillars and take out of those cubes there to drop the shields on the cyclops. Like I didn't notice because I'm a bit of a stupid idiot. So that's the only real mechanic in this, but the cyclops isn't the boss. A big hydra spawns in. So here's a few tips for you for this if you're underpowered like I was. First of all, throughout the entire lost sector, where you're killing lots of minotaurs there's lots of void shields so make sure you're taking something void to get rid of those void shields secondly you're going to need something long distance because once you get into this vex boss room you're going to be shooting from different platforms to try and get them killed from afar and of course we've got a hydra like i said as well which means we've got shields so i'd bring in something anti-barrier as well to sort them out Personally, I was using my Wish Ender, but if you haven't got Wish Ender, you could also use Arbalist or any anti-barrier weapon at all and shoot them from afar. Just make sure you're leveled up as far as you could be, because I was quite a few levels under the 1780, but I did manage to hack them down and get them killed in the end. It's not a locked loadout, it's a normal Lost Sector. So you can always pill for things from uh, your vault using Dim or whatever you've got on your Guardian before you go in. Well, anyway, once you've killed that Hydra, it's <laughs> I died loads of times, so don't feel bad, I died loads. Then once you collect from the boss cache the little compass thing, we can move on to the next step. 
and this step sees us going to Ahimsa Park, where we've got to kill 100 combatants. So we just make your way over there, you're going to have to go to a fast travel point. There isn't one in Ahimsa Park, unfortunately, so you're going to have to travel there. But once you get there, just kill 100 gits, doesn't really matter how you do it. There we go, so there's our 100 done. Now what we've got to do next is go and get a Seed of Silver Wings. Ooh, throwback to Season of Arrivals there. And this is actually on Callus's ship. Look, there he is with his massive kennel up there. So the waypoint marker will appear. You just need to make your way towards it. So I'm going to take you through this because it can be a little bit confusing in regard to where the marker is telling you to go. So getting into the entrance of the ship isn't too bad. You just make your way through following it down. Now when you come across your first bunch of gits, you'll see it's telling you to go over that way. But what you really need to do is jump over to the door to your right and then drop down and you have a bit of a scrap down here with a bunch of gits. Now, once you've cleared out those gits, you need to jump up on these platforms. You can see that they're just taking you up to the higher area. And then what you're looking for, you're going in the general direction of the waypoint, of course, jump up to the top level there. And then if you have a good old look, you can see that there's another lit up doorway to your right. We have done this during the campaign if you think it seems a little bit familiar. So you want to jump up to this doorway here and then drop down. Then you've got another room of gits that you need to take out and then just keep on following the waypoint marker. Nothing is too tricky but just make sure you look up and now and again to see where you've got to go. For example in this darkened room you can see here there's the light way to go. We've got a room full of pillars. Test your jumping skills. It goes around to the right so just gently make your way over to the right. Don't fall down. And then once you pop through here and drop down the area here, you're going to have a few more cabal in here. Kill them with their amusing screaming noise. Once you've sorted them out here, you get a big flashy donut portal. Jump through that, and that will take you to this room here, which you probably recognise from the campaign, particularly if you did it on Legendary. This was quite a tricky level. Now what we've got to pick up here are these Seeds of Silver Wings. Now I noticed that there was two markers around the outside of the room, so I went and picked both of them up, but only one of them seemed to give me the Seed of Silver Wings. It may be something to do with having to clear out the room of gits first of all. So if you're not getting anything picked up, clear the room of gits, and then go and pick them up. You can see they're easily marked, look, with the triangles on the maps. Are they triangles? Well anyway, that's where the Seed of Silver Wings is. Pick it up, and then we're on to the final step. So go back to see Nimbus, and they're going to give you this bizarre thing that they've wonked together. <laughs> it's very shonky, but it appears to work called Rohan's Pass Key. And now we need to go back down to a place called uh, Mayor's Retreat. You remember we went there initially to go and find the last piece of the data fragments for the first step of the mission. So you've got to make your way down to Liming or Liming Harbour, I have no idea, and then make your way over to Mayer's Retreat. Now this mission isn't too bad bad to do is a little bit of jumpy and a little bit of puzzles involved it's a 1770 level so if you can make sure you're infused up as high as you can be you just want to follow the uh, marker until you get to the flag because it's a flag that starts the mission clear out the surrounding vex otherwise they'll shoot you in the boom hole eh? here we go unfinished business level 1770 let's go in and get our gun now this mission is set in a very familiar place for us, the Black Garden, and I think it looks amazing. If you get a chance, don't just rush through it, check out what they've done, check out the skybox, it looks absolutely amazing. Well anyway, you're going to come around the corner, and first of all you're going to have a bit of a scrap with a lot of Vex who look like they come from a uh, naturist colony. Well anyway, you want to sort and kill out all these Vex as much as you can to give yourself a bit of a breather. And then what you're going to notice in the far distance there are these boxes that are holding shields in place. So you saw me shoot that one first of all. You can see those windmills, they're going to become important in a moment. The second one is behind another shielded area there. You just want to shoot that one on the right. And then there is a third one and it's actually down below. So you want to make your way to the edge of the cliff where you can see the like groovy little white lines and look down and you can see there's one right there behind the shield. Now if you've got ricochet rounds, hello Rick or something like that, you can use that little mirror to shoot the angle which will destroy it. This mechanic is going to be used throughout it. But all I did was jump down and shoot it from here. And then we're going to jump and make our way over to the next bit. Now, I'm going to let this piece play just to show you exactly where you need to go so you don't get stumped. Because it can be a little bit sort of, well, 
fiddly, I suppose is the best way you could say it. So we're walking uh, towards the end here, and you can see one of these Vex water wheels for their Vex guts that they churn up and down. God, the Vex are weird, aren't they, eh? Well, you can actually run on these uh, light cuts. Cartons, curtains here. So you're on one sail there. You want to jump over to the next sail there. Look. So you can just jump to that one there. It's not too bad. Glide your way across. If you find yourself dropping, use your grapple to get yourself over like I did there and continue to jump over to the end piece. But of course, you can also jump onto the water wheel too. Okay, next, we're going to turn around and we're going to follow our way around the outside. Careful not to slip. And we're getting close to the area where we need to be. There's a few little jumps here as well. Nothing to be too worried about. Except these pushy-outy things. There's two of them. There was one behind us and there's one there. Watch out for them. They'll poke you to your death. Hmm. Is that a pleasant way to go? No, it's not. Okay, after you've taken in an eye full of all the massive goodies and godliness. Because it looks great, doesn't it? Look at all the Vex guts over there. Look to your right. Anyway, we're keeping on going around here. Don't jump down. You want to look up and you want to jump on, carry on along this ledge here. Run away around. Run away. <laughs> I want to run away! Run around there. You want to jump over then to that little outcropping here. And then you want to jump down to the main outcropping here. And we're kind of into the last part of it now. We're going to have a, a bit of action. What's pretty cool, look, you can jump on those big mossy fungi leaves. They're fungi to be around. Anyway, you're going to go into this room here. And uh, not Rohan, well, uh, Nimbus will appear and disappear. But we can't follow them through the portal, so we've got to go our own way. You're just going to follow the marker now. It's generally pretty easy as far as directions are concerned. But just be warned, we're coming to a section where there's quite a bit of vex here. And we're going to get supplicants as well. Yes, the last syllable of their name is very true. Because, do you remember them? They were from Spire of the Watcher. They're basically harpies who just pile at you and explode. So they're like the vex version of the Cursed Thrall. And I hate them. And they take quite a bit of tickets as well. And kill me quite regularly. Now there are parts of this where you have uh, a darkness zone where you uh, it respawns you then back at the beginning of the particular section that you were doing so just be warned. Now after you've managed to kill the supplicants there's a minotaur there. You want to kill the minotaur and then it's going to give you that cranial lasery thing. Now the arc cranium that's what it's called. And we're going to use this to reflect the beam to destroy the little cube there to drop down the door shield so we can walk through them. Took me a little bit to cotton on here being a bit thick but there we go. I'll just check it. I go no that's not it. There it is and kablamo boom switches flicked. And we can carry on our merry way towards the marker. So you just want to jump your way down to this Vex Conflux here. And then once you activate the Vex Conflux, we have a puzzle again. You can see it's basically exactly the same kind of thing that we've already been doing. Now there's Minotaurs who spawn in. You kill them and they're going to drop more of these Arc Craniums. Don't worry about picking up that one that you just brought with you through there. Just kill the Minotaurs and pick up those Arc Craniums to find some mirrors to shoot the switches. So there we go, I picked up the first one. Now what I'm doing here is basically looking down each alleyway until I can see a reflective mirror surface. So this one I can see here, which is by that smaller one with the white light above it. I shot it, that destroyed the first cube. And then I'm keeping working my way around here. There's not one in that one there, so there's nothing to shoot for me there. I keep on going around here. That's the path that we came down. And then just next to it, you can see here, we've got another mirror. Not that one, it's this one, beg your pardon. It's very easy to spot. There you go, you can see the mirror. Shoot that, blammo, that'll do it. And that's it. That dropped it back down and we can continue on our merry way. Now, there's two things that have happened here. First of all, it's turned into a darkness zone. So if you die, you'll reset back to the beginning of this section. And the other thing is, you're following the white light from that Vex Conflux. This is going to show you the direction where you need to go. But be very careful, because there's a darkness zone, there's supplicants who come charging up at you. Make sure you give yourself a nice bit of distance to take them out. And then also, at the end, we've got a massive wyvern. I wouldn't advise you run out into the larger room to kill the wyvern. Use something long distance from this corridor to take them out and then just pick off the rest whoever's left.
Once the last Taken Git dies, then you'll notice that the darkness zone disappears. So what we've got to do now is continue to follow the waypoint. So it's pretty easy just to do a bit of running and jumping, but then what you're going to find is that you're going to come out into an area with quite a few platforms. There's lots of Taken Wizards there as well, which is incredibly irritating. So be careful, take them out. Very handy to have something long distance in here, something that can penetrate shields as well. I'm using my Wish Ender, but your Arbalist or something like that could also be very useful or anything anti-barrier or void really now once you're jumping down into this larger room you're going to see you've got the taken geezers you've got the taken wizards there that we're taking care of and we've got three big blights and we need to take each of these blights out in order to continue so my advice to you is take out the wizards first of all and then by each blight there is a large ogre as well who could cause you an awful lot of problems so take out those ogres too before you decide to jump down to where the blight is and take out any of the little turnips. So once you do that for all three blights, we can move on to the next part. It's just a simple marker following from this point. You want to follow through, uh, not follow through, <laughs> make sure you change your underpants, go through a portal, and you're basically following Nimbus and pursuing him and catching up. So there's a little bit of jumping, there's nothing crazy, and then you're going to come to this massive open field, and I just love the skybox. Look at it! What's going on? This reminds me of the end of Shadow Keep, don't you know? If you haven't played that, I'm not going to tell you exactly why. But anyway, once you go down this field area, you'll see Nimbus just kind of sitting there being all very sad and in front of them is the gun the deterministic chaos at last after a little bit of dialogue you can pick it up and it's yours to use but the mission isn't over yet because we get to use this baby now what you're going to find in this part is you're going to find these rings on the floor not those kinds of rings that'll give you full heavy ammo which will give you a nice chance to stretch your legs with this rather nifty exotic you know what i love about it as well that 16th bullet that gives a volatile shot you can see the four lights building up in front of it there and then once it hits the four lights then you're going to get a volatile shot it's excellent. There is a slight puzzle element to this bit as well. You're going to find you have to shoot more reflective panels to destroy some keys. But of course, the deterministic chaos has ricochet rounds on it. So you can just shoot it with your lovely new machine gun and it'll shoot the keys to let you through the doorway. And then we're on to the final battle to get the memory core that we need to take back. So the enemy is basically a massive Hydra, you'll not be surprised to find out. Now we're going to go into a darkness zone, so if you're killed, you'll have to restart this particular battle. Be wary though, there are supplicants in this one as well, yes. So make sure you dodge them because one close up by explosion and you're dead and you have to restart it. So you've got three phases in this battle and basically once you knock the uh, energy down by one third, and it retreats further down the passageway. So all you have to do is kind of follow it so you know you're going the right way. There are some reflective puzzle elements again. This is just at the beginning of the second stage. Make sure you shoot them from the right angle though because you can see I'm, I'm being blocked there by the force field. So just come around to the right there and you can shoot the reflection and that'll drop it and that'll drop the shield allowing you to pursue the Hydra for this second stage. Then once you take off the second stage of health you're going to go all the way back down to the final end into the corridor there. Now you do have loads of harpies spawning in at this point, but don't worry, none of them are supplicants, so they're not gonna pile in at you. You can just shoot them from a distance and not get too worked up. When they're at the final part, right down at the end, you'll see once again, you've got the reflective surfaces that you need to shoot with the ricochet rounds to take the shields down in order for you to kill the Hydra and complete the mission. When I was right the way down at the bottom here, I found it was better to dodge back and forth off the uh, two platforms. So you can see I've just shot the one on the right there. I'm sorting out those harpies. Just make sure they don't kick you in the face. And there's the other reflection, and that will drop that one down. And then he's ready for his final kick-ins. There we go. Pop it in. Make sure you're dodging, because you do have nice bits of cover here. And ta-da! It's toast. Lovely. I tell you what, I really, really enjoyed this mission. I really enjoyed going back to the Black Garden, and I thought it was pitched just right difficulty-wise, and now we've all got ourselves a lovely new exotic gun. There are two other quick steps. As it's finished, you pop and see Nimbus back on uh, Neomuna, and then there's also a cutscene after you visit the Hall of Heroes, but I won't show you any of that. You can watch that for yourself. I think it's actually quite poignant, that one.
If you've watched the entire guide from beginning to end, I really hope you found it useful. And if you did, and if you wouldn't mind to click the like button, that really helps the video's visibility on YouTube, because it doesn't like me at the moment for some reason. I don't know why. And if you want to see more stuff on the channel, uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell as well. We'll let you know when I splap something extra out. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I shall speak to you all again very soon. Sausage? Hoot!